High Commissioner for Human Rights, Prince Zaid Happy. We are embarking on this difficult journey because we owe it to the people of our nation to forge a new future where all citizens will be treated with equal dignity and respect so that the country can be truly united and move forward. In order for all Sri Lankans to move forward together, we must uh, come to terms with the shortcomings of the past and we want, we, 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 we want also to commit ourselves to ensure that the horrors and the tragedies of the past will never again be allowed to happen in any part of this beautiful little island ever again. And the, first, and the politics of extremism is not allowed to raise its ugly head ever again, whether in the north, uh, neither in the north nor in the south. The government wants to design mechanisms in a way that truly reflects the needs and aspirations of our citizens, especially the victims of the senseless war. We want this mechanism to last until they fulfill the purpose for which they were created. The consultations for the new constitutions have already begun. And today I am very pleased to announce that we are starting the process of consultations on the design uh, of the four reconciliation mechanisms. We have appointed 11 distinguished and eminent independent citizens to the consultation task force, headed by Dr. Manori Mukhetulgam. I am aware that there are many here today who still have fears and doubts, but I can assure you that the National Unity Government of President Sirisena and Prime Minister Vikram Sinha is committed to ensuring the successful completion of this process. While President Sirisena is leading the all-party conference on constitutional reforms to get the ideas in, in, and input of all political parties, I have met the Defence Secretary, the Chief of Defence Staff, both of whom are here today, the Tri-Service Commanders and the IGP, the heads of intelligence agencies, the commanders of the security forces and the police DIGs in charge of the North, who is also here today and some of those responsible for security in the East. I have also met the governors of the North and East. They have all assured me of their fullest cooperation in ensuring that there are no hindrances in ensuring this consultation process 
takes place and that the security of all those participating will be ensured. I cannot emphasize enough the importance of dealing with the past in order to move forward and build a united, peaceful and prosperous Sri Lanka. We cannot forget the tears of mothers still grieving for their missing sons 30 years later in Point Dhyondra and nor can we forget the mother who is grieving for her LTT combatant son killed in a senseless and brutal war in Point P2. Both these mothers and wives are not only crying for their lost loved ones, they are also crying for our country and the many opportunities we have lost over the years. At independence in 1948, we were set to become the brightest and the best in Asia. Instead, what was for many centuries known as the pearl of the Indian Ocean became known as the teardrop of the Indian Ocean. Uh, just one matter I want to say before uh, to you is that this is an important, very, very important consultation and uh, people of uh, eminence, uh, people of integrity, people of independence have been appointed to this uh, committee to uh, seek your views uh, in respect of uh, certain uh, crucial uh, uh, accountability. Uh, it's important that, uh, uh, that you encourage uh, people, uh, particularly those who are affected, uh, to come forward and without any fear uh, state their expectations as to what they think is just.